Hey guys, this is episode four of the Crane Rental Podcast. Once again, we brought back Todd Brown, our safety... I always forget. <laughs> safety training coordinator. Safety training coordinator. Um, today we're going to be talking about what you see here at Rigging and the importance of... We talked about uh, in episode one or two, we talked about the need for crane rental matting, mm-hmm. right? And the importance of crane rental mats, of setting up on a, a solid surface, uh, proper matting techniques. Now we're going to kind of go into what keeps the load suspended and safely suspended. And that's your rigging. Yeah, how we attach the load. Right, so we're going to be talking about basically hook down here from today. So from the crane hook down, um, you know, to your load or, you know, if you're lifting outrigger mats, whatever you're lifting is, is going to involve some sort of rigging. And also, you know, proper things to look for in your rigging, proper techniques. So Todd, what do you got for us today? Well, I mean, a lot of times we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put a lot of attention on the crane and it's the big piece of equipment out there and right. it draws a lot of attention, but no matter how good that crane is or how well we inspect it and how well it's maintained, if we don't rig properly, well, we, we have a problem. It's the yeah. weakest link and a lot of times that happens. Rigging failure does happen and it has happened to people and it's uh, something that, uh, um, can happen and we have to avoid it all costs. So we have to rig things properly. Yeah, you could have a 500 ton crane of the Grove GMK 7550 and be lifting, you know, a 2,000 pound AC, but if your rigging's not right, you could be capacity good. Sure. You could be good on the capacity, but if your rigging's junk, then... The rigging's junk. And that's <laughs> you're your have, weakest link. So. Yeah, you're going to have safety problems, you're going to have issues, uh, possible injuries. Sure, damage rigging. There's yeah. a lot of issues. So. Rigging's and it's it's a big part of what we do. It's 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 important that we do it correctly and that uh, that we understand how to do it. Yeah. So do you have any examples of some rigging we have here? Yeah. So I, what we like to do is, you know, uh, any rigger needs to know how to inspect his rigging. That's right. The that's, key. that's step one is inspection. Now you get to the job site. You want to take your mats off. You want to, you get set up. But you got to inspect your rigging. Sure. And this may be even done uh, is it done before and after a job or. So, or whenever you touch it, or yeah, I'm so so rigging is uh, we would do an initial inspection on rigging when we purchase it, when we get it, when you put it on your crane or whatever. Make sure it has a proper tagging of weights of uh, you know if it's a choke or a basket. You know you have to have that tagging. What's rated for, right? Sure. So that so that that first initial inspection. Some it is conceivable to get a piece of rigging from the manufacturer that uh, they put the wrong tag on. That has happened. So we and would, you're, it's unusable technically. It's unusable, and then we would send it back again. So your initial inspection, you want to make sure. Hey, I got it from the manufacturer. Manufacturer, um, uh, whoever's producing it, and you want to make sure it's it is what it says it is, and it is meets the inspection criteria. Um, from there, then you would have a per use inspection. Every time we use rigging, and as we're using it, we're going to we're going to inspect it per use. Um, as we're using it, after every lift, you're going to look at that rigging right. in, in per use inspection because uh, things can change during a lift and over time. UV damage, sure. right? Sure. Uh, stretching of maybe steel. Uh, well, we, there's different types of rigging too. We have, we have all kinds. Yeah. yeah, we have all kinds. But there's two basic types or top categories or tiers, right? Right. So let me let me finish the um, inspection. So we did uh, we did initial, we did a per use, and then right. we also the required to have an annual inspection, which is a written inspection that's documented. What do you mean written? Do you have like a is it like your crane inspection like a checklist? It, or? Can, it can be a checklist. Um, our, our actually what we call per use inspection for us is a written inspection in the sense that it goes on the it's on our crane inspection logs just so that we out of necessity we check off that we did the inspection. So that's a written inspection also. Um, but that has to be done at least annually, and it, and it is done uh, daily for us. In other places, they'll go through and have an, one day or one they'll go through and, and go through their rigging, do an inspection, right. document the inspection, and, and so on. But we're required to have documentation of that inspection. Um, inspection's important. Um, things that you're looking for. Todd's pulling stuff out of his magic box if you can't see it. Um, if you listen to us on iTunes, he has a magic box of rigging over here. Yeah, we, we definitely... Do you call it your magic hat? No, I do not. But, you know... <laughs> so, when we're doing rigging, you know, some of the things you're gonna, we're looking for is we want to make sure that that tag mm-hmm. is, is... First of all, is it actually meet what, what the rigging we have? It's, it's sewed onto. Yeah, it is, is, it, is it a 10-foot whatever or, or is it... Whatever a, it might be. And some of the things that has to be in rigging is you're going to have 
Um, you're gonna have right here, this one's called, I think they put on here type, but a stock or code number you know, right here. Right. Then you're gonna have how wide it is, in this case two, but in the stock or code number, or type number, uh, two refers to how wide it is. And so that, that number means something to us. So it's two inches wide. Right. And then right here, you'll notice that it'll have vertical, and it tells us the capacity of this sling. In, in a vertical load. Which one, is straight up and down. Right, right. Vertical load. And right. so it gives us a capacity, and this is 3,100 pounds. And then from there, it says it gives us a choke. And what that is, let's... Can you demonstrate a choke real yeah, quick so for that people is who are watching? So that is a choke, and keep in mind this is a non-rendered or non-bitten choke, so it's just where it naturally lies, about 130 degrees, 135 degrees. Right. That's a choke. Okay. Yeah. So it gives us the capacity of that, which is, you'll notice, is less, 2,480 pounds. So our synthetic, it tends to be 80% of vertical. Ah, okay. Tends to be, depending on the manufacturer. But you want to check the, the tags, of course, that's just kind of a... a yeah, that, and, that, and that's how it works. Um, wire rope um, uh, tends to go uh, uh, 75%. Ah, okay, of the capacity in a choke situation? Choke. Right, of the vertical capacity, what do you call that? So we call vertical 100%. And then, then down here what you have is a basket, and we generally call that a 200% rating. So generally speaking... Because you have two vertical legs supporting the load. Yeah, so a basket is this. We're all tangled up here. <laughs> so a basket really tend, is this. It's a, it's a basket. The two verticals, basically. Yeah, so you have two vertical loads, you know, or two vertical legs, legs. Is, is a term, and your, your load would be a cylinder or something, whatever something. the case is. Right. So that would be the, the number of the basket. So that's, that's, that's what you're looking for. So yeah, we got 5,200, or 6,200, 6, which is... Double the 3,100, which was vertical. Right, okay. right. Um, then you'll have other information. For example, here, um, and excuse me, I don't have my reading glasses. It's, they call it cert number, or they can, it's, it's an identification number for that specific sling. And you notice this one is marker, Dan, that's how they do it. Right. Um, and it's per manufacturer. Per manufacturer will be different. Um, but, but you need to know, it, here's length, six inch, six foot length. Now on a synthetic, it doesn't have to have the length, but the manufacturers generally put them in there. So, I mean, this tag may slightly change, but all this information has to be here. That if, has, if you had a different brand. It, yeah, brand to brand. The only thing that doesn't have to, that we do have here, is the length does not have to be on a synthetic. But, oh, okay. Um, That's certainly good to know if you have a python or something like that. Yes. It says it's a three-footer, you know there's a problem. Yeah, or, you're or right. Or an anaconda part or of anaconda, it. anaconda, yeah, python. I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, th those are your tags. They've got to be on there. They've got to be legible. If it's not legible, it's removed from service. I mean, that's the way it works. Then you go through the, the, the inspection. I won't go through a full inspection process, but you're going to look for damage. Sure, sure. Uh, blowing out stitching. You'll see a lot of slings will blow out the stitching right in here. And, and that's a big no-no. Yeah, you know, it's obviously, and what that is, we overfilled this eye, and then we loaded it, and we blow the stitching out. Oh, okay. So we can only, we can only fill this eye up one-third the eye length. And without blowing it out under under its uh, capacity. So other things you would like uh, look for, like we talked about, is UV damage, especially yeah. here in the southwest. Maybe not if uh, you were up north or something; it may not be a problem. But yeah. here in the south, southwest, UV damage, and there's ways to check for UV damage. Um, so on a synthetic uh, flat wet sling like the one we we're just mm -hmm. looking, or like what this is, this is one we're using as a softener now. But you know, this is damage. This is damage. UV damage, you'll they'll turn a gray color. Oh, generally okay. speaking. Um, you can also hit them against a solid surface, and if you see dust fly out, that's a sign of UV damage also. Oh, really? Because it may not be a surfacing, but it may be, uh, I don't want to say molecular, but it's, it's on a smaller scale. Smaller in, in So if you hit it and you see a big dust cloud, you got problems. Yeah, it's degraded the, the fibers internally, so therefore they, 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 they break apart, and, mm -hmm. and you'll see them come out in a dust form. So that's sure. another way to tell. Do not breathe that dust, right? Well, no, you wouldn't want to do that. But uh, you're going to look for any snag, and this is an extreme example. Again, this is a softener that we use. Um, uh, but I, you know, I thought it's good for you, for example. Yeah, I mean, you can see damage the here, damage here, um, uh, holes. See if you have any sort snag. of cut, and this is, you know, yeah, or no, a nick. No, no nicks, no cutting. Yeah. One of the things you got to watch on these is if you notice, you can see it looks like vertical lines here, or horizontal. Yeah, vertical, yeah. Vertical, vertical. Vertical lines. And no, so we'll horizontal. use these on, a, uh, on something, and they've used it against a, a surface, and it, and it can cut within those lines, and then you don't really see that cut because it hides mm. it in there. So when you inspect, you want to roll them back and look at it, and you'll see those cuts if there was a cut. Any damage, because all the load-bearing fibers on these um, uh, flat web slings mm -hmm. are, are, are visible. So any damage is sufficient to remove it from service.
And uh, these are the, probably the least expensive form of uh, sling, but also damaged quite easily. Right. So you got to keep that in mind. So inspection's the uh, a big part. Of That's it. step one if you're if you're doing this. Okay. Now we have our. This is a softener here you brought out. Yeah, I wanted to show that. This is magnetic, right? Uh, this one is not magnetic. I do have it. This one here. Oh, this is the magnetic. Okay. Yeah, this one here. So in a corner, it's magnetic. So um, the purpose of a softener is obviously so if you have a sling that Todd's had in the first segment, and you wrap that around a sharp edge, right? Right. You'd have your sling. So you, you can see this cutout here. It used to be if you know if you have a sharp edge piece of metal, it's going to shear through this. Sure, you can't use that against anything. You can't use this against metal with a, with a sharp edge. Even a, cha uh, a metal sling, you know... A wire rope sling. wire way. rope sling. Could, it's still kind of... You, yeah, I mean... What, what, so you, you, you uh, put this around the softener, and you basically mitigate that corner, that corner. into a, you know, a, a sling safe load. And this is what... What did you have here? Yeah, we call these are corner mags. Um, I believe this is corner max. Yeah. So uh, um, this basically, it's, it's got a, a neoprene sewed into here, a little piece of plastic in mm -hmm. here. And uh, um, it goes on the corner and it makes a gap on that corner. So when the sling goes through here and around. Oh, okay. So the sling actually goes through here. It would go through the... Right. This is a... This looks like... Okay. So there, therefore, it, it protects it. One thing we say is with synthetics, and, and, and there's no question whether you're going to protect these areas, load bearing and non load bearing area, contact areas. Uh, Moshe says you shall do it, so that's what we do. Um, when we're dealing with wire rope slings, let me show you wire rope. Uh, this is a wire rope sling. Okay. Um, you know, so Moshe this is basically, says, oh, keep going, sorry. Moshe says basically we, we should do it. Right. These are, these are uh, a far superior rugged they're, more, they're much more rugged than the synthetics yeah this is basically braided steel right right braided steel lines wire wire rope it's a rope and it's made out of wire basically it's braided um, um the one thing you got to worry is you cannot bend this only so much because the more you bend it the less of these little wires carry the load oh so you're right you're reducing capacity and you'll see that a lot of people using these and they're all kinked and bent well you've reduced the ability to carry the load so that's that, that's, so that's an inspection that. thing that's that's an inspection that's a use thing too how you yeah. use it i'm going to use this around here and based on the diameter i go around and the diameter of the wire rope i get a reduction uh, in its capacity oh so there's a reduction based off of off using a softener of the could be thing? could be this could be i go around a piece of pipe oh right right um if i 90 it around a piece of angle iron well i'm pretty much wrecking my wire rope sling that's yeah because now you've basically done this and that Iron's going to jab into here. Sure. We're, Cut it microscopically, right? Yeah, and if you look at this, you bend this over, you can see it's crimped and crimped here. It's a yeah. Flemish eye. It's braided and it has a crimp on it to keep it together. Mm -hmm. As I bend this over something, see these little wires are here. The more I bend it, fewer and fewer of these wires are carrying the load over the top, and the bottoms are just getting smashed. Yeah, the bottom's in compression, top is in tension, tension right? right? And then your metal, your core. Does this have a core? Uh, yeah, this, this would have a core, right? Okay. Uh, and you're going to have a breakout of the Let me show you a breakout. Here, we'll keep that up here because that has a tag and we can talk about that. Um, the, so the tagging on these, uh, these just are just... to keep it. Yeah, these are the same tagging process as the synthetics. So we have our diameter, type, vertical, choker, basket. Oh, at 90, it even says. At 90, yeah. And sometimes you'll get at degrees. And that yeah. Goes, so. But so this, is, this is the same thing, and that's why I wanted to... So this is a blown up version if you guys are watching on uh, YouTube, if you're on iTunes. He taught just took out a blown up version of that wire rope uh, basically and it's a breakaway here yeah it's a breakaway that that um uh, that my boss had made which are really nice i use them all the time now it shows you the core it, it, sh it shows you the strands and then you can see the little wires that make up the strands that's breakaway. pretty cool and you can see uh if you're watching this you can see this we have a blue kind of uh you know, wire rope that goes all the way around and he just marked it blue. That's considered one lay. Right, so so the blue is, so this is a strand, each one of these strands, and each little wire is braided to make up the strands. Right. This rope is called regular right lay. And this is what you use to make um, a rigging slings out. Okay. Now, there's a measurement process when you're inspecting and they call it one lay. Right. So, so many little broken wires or defects within one lay is how you would. And some and of the lay is from top 
to top of one strand. That distance is a lay. And that's why you painted it blue so you can visually see sure, that. Sure. But you can, there is allowable uh, for little broken things. I can't remember the exact reg, and you probably do. Yeah, I mean, we can go through each set, but I think for this we would... Yeah, we can keep it, yeah, we can keep it, it large. Because, because it gets comp... Uh, but there is, there is some allowable stuff there, just, sure. just worth mentioning. Oh, so, this is interesting. So, yeah, this is a breakdown. This is what they call a rotation-resistant rope. And this is what you'd most likely see on the winch cable of a crane, right? Yeah, no, this, so this would most likely apply to a hoist line on the crane. Right. Um, this wire rope uh, is not to be used for making rigging. We're not we're not making wire rope out of this. Or, I'm sorry, we're not making rigging out of this. Right. Um, but it's nice to see a cut down to see the difference of how this works. And what this the intention of this is is that this is your load line, man. Yeah, yeah. This is what your the, the intention of this is that it, if you were to use a regular rope and you pick a load on that, it would want to spin on you. Well, it wants to unravel itself. It does. Right? So this works against itself. And why, if you uh, are watching once again, you can see this, but if you're not, what he has is a, is a wire rope here that's broke down and has three cores, and each core is, rotate, is uh, wrapped the opposite way. It's counter-wrapped. Right. So, so, this, so this way, this lay is wrapped the opposite of this lay, which is wrapped the opposite of this. So it uses physics to unwrap itself, but it's, it tries to unwrap itself, it just stays still. Right. So it's a that's what's rotational resistance. Yeah, it's rotational resistance. So it's mechanical in nature. Uh, it works against itself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the drawbacks of this kind of wire rope is it's harder to inspect because damage can be internal. Oh, much. right, right. So you could have, that's what we were talking about earlier, you could have core damage uh, on a wire rope that you don't know about. Yes, it's possible. It's yeah. possible. So, uh, and, there's, and there's ways to tell from the outside, hourglassing, if you see an hourglassing, oh, it's right. obviously core failure or something failure. True. So there's ways to inspect it. But that's a good you know, example, so you know the existence. This is the crane. Right. Now, not all cranes. Some cranes will have regular rope or what they call laying lay. And now they have, uh, have you seen they have synthetic load lines now? Sure, yeah, there's synthetics. I, you know, we're not using them. Sure, sure. But, but I just thought that was interesting. I saw that in an in a, um, email blast that came out a while ago. And it was at, uh, it was at Con Expo and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, that's where I got. So Todd's pulling out stuff, more stuff from the Magic Hat. So this was, this was hollow, uh, hollow core rope. Okay. Um, and, and the reason I brought it out is because you said synthetic rope. And right. so it would, look, it would look very similar oh, to yeah, this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that would be the load line on the crane. Yeah. But we're talking about rigging, so. Right. This is a piece of rigging <laughs> that we use, but we put it be rare for us to use. That, that's more of a tagline thing, or? No, that would be, we could. We you could, could actually rig with that? Yeah, and, and that you can actually alter it. Um, but you got to kind of, it's a little more involved kind of making this size of slings you want and, and whatnot. Let's see what else we got here. So... Uh, oh, that's what I wanted to show you guys, the shackles. So on, so, a, sh on a shackle, it's, it's funny because... Um, <laughs> there's a few things we can talk about. Yeah, there's a few shackles. So when everybody knows how to put a shackle on. Right, I think I know where you're going, yeah. So, so and, 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 and this is, and, everybody, <laughs> and we do this in class, and everybody you know, says, hey, put this shackle together, and they put it together, and everybody does this. They put it together, not everybody, most people, and they do this, and then... They, they, they tighten it all the way, they crank it down, and then they do the, the half rotation, half... Half turn. Half, whatever. They do some turn back. Yeah, because... We'll, and so we we'll, ask the question, is that correct, you know? Right. Yeah. And in, in, in this way, I was always taught to do it. And the answer is no, it's not correct. No, it's not correct. I mean... The, but, the, the, but the generational knowledge has taught everybody in this industry to, hey, uh, do, a half, do a half turn out of the shackle pin. Right. Otherwise, you're going to be getting a, a breaker bar to, to break this off, right? Yeah, because what happens if, if I do this... Right. And then I and then I didn't tighten it that time. I just I just yeah, it's, it's, I just seated the shoulder. If I do a net capacity pick, what it can, can this this will tend to be really tight when I want to take it off. Yeah, it tends to. So to mitigate that, or people do is they'll back them off. Well, what you've done is incorrect. Right. Because the manufacturers all say firmly seat the shoulders like that, and that's why they're flat. And they have a hole for like a spud range. Right, right, or a breaker bar or something. So, so they can be removed. It's done out of ease and stuff, but it's, it's incorrect. It's incorrect. So we always demonstrate that. We make sure that. Another way you can tell, too, if, if we've been doing that and then doing picks at capacity is, right. is you'll find a shackle. And when you take it off, you'll spin it. And if you're coming loose, it'll kind of hang up. And then it'll, and it'll hang up. And then and you think, well, the threads are damaged. But when you, yeah. when you pull it out, the threads are good. Well, what's the deal with that? You had some deformation. Oh, in the actual pin? Yeah, well, it could be in the bow too. Oh, okay. And not necessarily the pin. Uh, so it could be in the bell or the pin. So there's something. Yes, yeah, so usually it's in the bow. Oh, they and call this a bow? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So, I thought you said bell. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Technical term, bow. Yeah, so it could be in the bow. Um, not likely in the pin, but it's always possible. Um, but yeah, that's, that's generally what happened is we backed it off, we did some at capacitors, or we did it kind of crooked or sideways. Yeah. Um, you'll notice on the shackle, though, it tells you where you can put your slings, where, 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 the, uh, where the load should be applied. Yeah, do you have a, a, something we can, a sling we can just throw in here, maybe? Yeah. Now, also, you're going to see all your standard manufacturing uh, numbers and labels. This is a half ton um, shackle, then you have your 45 degree marks, and you have to have all those markings on here for this to be legal. Yeah, so that's... Mm -hmm. the, so the stamp, it has to be ray stamped or, or right. embossed in here. And Much like the sling, the tag slings. If the slings on the tag aren't present, we, you know, it could be brand new. We just can't use them. You, you can't use it. You it's unusable. Use it. Yeah, it's unusable. I mean, there's information. In that application, you have to, you'd have to cut it up, use it as softeners or whatever, right? That's correct. So, so it'll say, like, WLL, and that means working load limit. Right. And it's a six-ton shackle. So in its, where it's marked, we can use this to six tons. It has the name on it. Oh, the half ton is for the 45? I'm sorry, six and a half tons. Oh, okay. Ton. I missed the six, guys. Yeah, I, I said six. It's six. It says six and a half. But I missed the six, so we're both kind of yeah, blends yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, and it tells you where you can use it at. And then it has the name Crosby, so that's a manufacturer. Right. And then it's a 7 8 shackle. And what the 7 8 means is, is we see this, is it 7 8 right? I'm sorry, it's 7 8 right here in the body bow. Okay, so the, the top. Here is seven eighths. That's correct. Oh, okay. And then, and then the, down here, what well, we don't realize is the pin's actually usually one size bigger than the body bow. Interesting. So if you measure that and said, oh, it's a whatever one inch or whatever it might be, right. it, it's not. It's a seven eighths in here. So that's where it is. And so it you should be labeled on here. Yeah. And they're directional pull. It tells you how to use a directional. Now there are shackles that allow you to pull actually at a ninety degrees. Oh, really? But they'll have a reduction of about fifty percent of ninety, seventy-five. So you're you're looking at three three tons or six thousand pounds or sure. whatever the case is. Now six and a half tons is uh, thirteen thousand pounds. So that's a pretty good shackle. No, yeah, I mean and these things are really tough, and they and they do a good job for us. And uh, what's um, the life on a shackle? Uh, you know, and uh, it's hard because uh, to say that because I'm talking about perfect world situations and we don't live in those perfect worlds. I mean, if we use it correctly and we maintain it, we keep it clean and we inspect it, this should, this should last you a lifetime. Oh, really? Okay. okay. So, there's so it, there's, this could last a long time. Oh, absolutely. If taken care of and used right, and, and used et cetera. Properly. One of the th things we'll find is if you notice you, you put this pin in and I firmly seat that shoulder like I'm supposed to. Now I put a synthetic and mm -hmm. this is synthetic. Right. If I put it on here and I load that, see right here, I'm going to load that and I'm going to push that synthetic into those threadings and I can damage the synthetic. Oh, wow. So, so you may even need softeners here. Interesting. So ideally, you would not want the synthetic on here, or you'd want the synthetic on the bow. Right, right. And that's how typically you see it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> now, there's different types of shots. Oh, wow. This is a different one. Yeah. We'll put this uh, to our side here. So this typically is what we call, I would call them sling savers. And yeah, yeah. And that's for exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So see how this is now. This is not the right size. This is a two inch and this is probably what a three or four inch. Right. But, but it still works. It still works. So see what that does. What you don't want to happen is you don't want, is you don't want to do this. You want to avoid this because what happens is I load that. I'm, all, I'm loading the outer fibers, yeah, but not, the, the, not the inner, so I'm not getting my full capacity. Yeah, so he's, yeah, so if you're using a sling, uh, you want to make sure that you're using maybe a sling saver or you have a smaller sling or you want to be conscious of how you load this sling right. on the shackle because you're going to have some misloading of the fibers. Um, which could derate the sling. Well, yeah, technically you, we're not using the full capacity, though, right. so we don't have that benefit of it. Now you can do this to mitigate those issues, that helps. So I folded it over. Okay, so you folded it over, yeah, at that at Which the is, bow. if you'll notice, I mean, this has got a protector on it. It's the same thing. As the yeah. Thing. Now, you know, it's not a perfect world, but, but we will say that that definitely is much better than that right there. Okay. So you see what yeah. I'm Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. And then you have this one here, the sling saver, where yeah, you... Which is the ideal. Yeah, you're going to go full span on that sling. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, those are nice. Um, it's funny thing about these is... Um, you know, we don't do if if you say give me a two inch, it means two inch in here. But on the on the other ones, if you said a two inch, that would be the body bow. So yeah, so this could be a gigantic. Uh, yeah, big old. So a little <laughs> different way they measure them and stuff. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I I, uh, I like sling savers. Um, 
Amazing. Great for, uh, you know, ACs. Well, anything with a sharp object, you're going to need a, a sling saver. Yeah. Or, pardon me, you're going to need um, some sort of oh, right. softening, softening. And, and, and proper shackles. Okay, we got a hook yeah. here, it looks like. And, you know, it just doesn't pass inspection. But it's <laughs> Why not, Todd? Well, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> obvious on this one. But um, if you'll notice... Um, there's a lot of things. A lot of yeah, things there's a lot of things. There's gouging. There's, this thing's beat up. Um, seen better days. But I, what, what's interesting about this, and I think that a lot of people think, oh, hook, it will just break. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fracture or uh, mechanically fracture, you know, in the steel and snap off. That's what they think. Yeah, but here's how they're, they're designed to do. The metallurgy is such and should be. Now, right. You know, we don't know every hook, but <laughs> that it should deform. And that's where it's important with hooks to when you inspect make sure there's zero deformation because it can be minute mm -hmm. but you've damaged that hook and it needs to be of service and a lot of times you'll have tram marks a little mark here a little mark there you can measure those and refer oh, yeah, to those measurements yeah that's that's you're right you measure this uh the opening yeah the opening and that needs to be within the specs of the original right. hook obviously you can see how it's opened up here this generally touches you know our hook tip yeah here. yeah this should be uh, again, you know, deformation from plane, that'll happen because oh, yeah. you choke something and you bring it around and then you deform your hook. Yeah, you side load it or something or, or who knows. And then, then you have these, uh, I don't want to call it a keeper, but it's not a keeper, the, uh, the latch. I'm probably using the wrong terms. Now. Isn't it something like dog something? No, but um, anyways, the point is, if this doesn't do its job, a lot of people say, well, I can't use it. Because these do get broken. They're not, they're not made for carrying any load. Right. Just to keep the rigging from flopping out. Yeah. If that happens, you can what they call mouse the hook. Oh, that's and, what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, you can mouse the hook. You could put uh, something to keep that rigging from popping out until you get the replacement. Mm. So there's, you know, the, the, that the intention is just to keep it from flopping out. Yeah, and then you'd have um, your shackle would go onto here or your sling, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab our sling here. You know, your sling would go in here. And then I would mouse a hook with something. It could be... And if this, if this is a legal working hook, this would be touching here, and then this, would be, this wouldn't be able to come out. Right. And that would be the intention. But th that's not something you're going to run with. It's just for that day, and you order the parts, and you get the new uh, latch put on there. And... Yeah, you have your... Um... Parts guy. Uh, parts guy, Craig Doc. Shout out to Craig. Yeah, yeah Craig. he'll take care of you, get your parts as you need. And then you can get your uh, hook and rigging back to um, optimal, you know, basically standards. The other hooks in, that I wanted to show was, this is a foundry hook, and I don't know if you notice when I, when I notice there's no, no... Yeah, there's no keeper or whatever you called it. So when I let go of this, it falls off. But think uh -huh. of a foundry, or think of an application where you need to de-rig without getting in there to de-rig. Yeah, you're talking about foundry, you're talking about molten metals. Sure, could, um, yeah. could be a nuclear facility where you're dropping bags in a hole that they're going to bury or whatever they do with it. You don't want to be down there. <laughs> you don't want to be next to it. So a you, would, you would use something nuclear like drum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it has applications. Sure. But you got to remember with these kind of hooks, these are what they call uh, uh, not for overhead lifting. I hate that expression because it's. Yeah, super, what does that go into that more, maybe? Well, so, so overhead lifting. Doesn't mean over my head, right? Because here. that's against OSHA. That's right. We don't want to do that, but it means over my head in height. Oh, okay. So this would be this is not for overhead lifting. No, this, this is would be for waist high, maybe, or yeah, for just picking it up, moving it over here, dropping it down, and then it releases itself because it's weighted to do so. There's another hook that's similar. Or well, it's not similar to this, but it, it has a function that is. Yeah, this is kind of a goofy looking hook. Yeah, so they'll call these pelicans. Oh, and okay. shake out. It kind of does look like a pelican. Yeah, and then you, you get newer ones. This is a little bit older one, but they have handles here, and they got a groove here. So, you, so what you do is it's for shaking out steel or items like that. Really. And in but not for overhead. Sure, sure. So you lay it out where it's got to go, and so forth. And if you hear you hold like this, you can put it into the little bolt holes in the, the, the holes there, there in the steels for the rivets or whatever. Oh, okay. I see what you're and saying. It, it almost, yeah, it almost looks like a, a spud wrench. Yeah, yeah. And it, Glued to a hook, you know? They have here. What happens is people do this and they bust their knuckles, so that's why they put these grooves. And then oh. have, now they have some with handles. And they're, they're, they can get different ways. But you got to keep in mind that this thing, this one is, is designed to be loaded from, on the tip. So this working load limit, it looks pretty substantial hook, but it's only two tons. Oh yeah, it's only four thousand pounds. So yeah, that's... but it's but it's tip rated. If you look at other hooks, we 
you have a magic box over here. I love your magic hat of, of rigging. Yeah, I got stuff I like to use, for example. Hey guys, so we're just talking about kind of rigging going back between um, hooks, slings, right. you know, metal. I guess it'd be wire rope. Wire it? rope, yeah. R hooks are rated in, in an area. So that one's on the tip, this one would be in, in here. So you got to use a hook, the hook properly for yeah. its application. That's, that's interesting. I've never seen those ones that are uh, weighted like that. Obviously, we don't use those. Cause it's rare, but it has an application. It yeah. It has an application. But we have, in our applications, we need ones that have a, a locking sure. um, uh, ability to lock. Right, right. I had one. All right, so here's a good example. Ah, there we go. Yeah. This, this shows this shows you. <laughs> this is our baby hook. Yeah, but this shows you where it's it's working. So you got to work within that area. Yeah, you, can't you can't tip. You can't point load this hook. It's not rated for it. Yeah, and you also can't. You know, you, you're not going to be working here either, because you, no, no, yeah. you're going to be doing something weird. You got to be working in these lines here. So it tells you where you can work, and that's what we use. I had a self locking one. Oh, here it is. So self-locking, these are... Oh, that's cool. So as I come up, look, I never lose my load that way. Oh, that's pretty cool. Problem with these is pretty easy to damage them, especially if you try to choke something with it. Right. And, um, and it's mechanical in nature, so more inspection. More yeah, inspection. so you would only... you would inspect this uh, throat, is what they call it, right? Right. And then you inspect maybe this mechanism here, your locking mechanism, your yeah. spring. Uh, this is a nice. This is a nice Crosby hook here. Yeah, no, I mean these are they're useful, but they're a little bit different for inspection. Self-locking. Here's a, a boom. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. You basically, as you apply weight to this hook, it's going to snap closed. The throat is now closed. Now you're good to good to go. Right. And it's locking too. It's, it's locking. locking. You've got it. So you're not you're not doing this. There's a little safety here that you put pop out um, and back in. You're back in business. Back in business. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that, and I also like this is one of my favorite shackles. Why I, is that? I got, Did you name it? No, I haven't named the shackle, but I, I <laughs> this is one I got from a job, and I actually traded a guy two new shackles for this shackle. Okay, so we got to hear the backstory because this was his grandfather's. Oh, okay. is what he tells me. So and where? He, okay, where was the site? You got to, you can't just well, drop this bombshell and, no, just, yeah. and go into shackles. Well, so it was, a, it was at a school for a contractor who was doing the awnings, these big metal awnings. Here in town, in New here Mexico, in, in Albuquerque. Okay, here in Albuquerque. And so the contractor went over there to do a, um, a job walk with Mike Cones because we were trying to trying to fix them out. So I was going to help him out. Yeah, Mike Cones are territory salesman for Albuquerque, Albuquerque area. area. And so he had this shackle which he was using. How old was the gentleman? Um, I mean, if ballpark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was probably in his 40s. Okay. okay. And, he, and he says his father had it before him. And then his grand, grandfather had it? Or that his father... Twice removed? Twice removed. <laughs> so it would be his grandfather. <laughs> the genealogy gets me all yeah. confused. And the, and the business, I guess, went through the family. And he's oh, always okay. had this shackle. And so he how, did you, how did you get him away from this Well, thing? that's, 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 like, he that's was like, like an antiques roadshow type story, and you like yeah. stole it from him. He, his, he was using it on a forklift. Oh really? And I saw it. And I went over and looked uh, at on it. the tip of the forklift. You know, uh, no, no, just uh, over the the bar. The I don't know what you call it. It's a, the tines. The, the the bar that goes through the holes of forks. And then he would put a sling on it, and he would pick stuff up. Oh, the bar that goes through those little holes in the forks. Yeah. I don't know what that bar is called. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, the, the point of being is, if you look at this thing, I mean, this thing has been around. You know it's what? It's got I mean? cut marks. It's been drug on the road. I don't know what's happened to it. But yet, I'm, this is an amazing thing. This shackle seats. Now it, it doesn't mean inspection. We are not going to use it, it but it, it just goes to show you that it, how actually rugged these things can be. So we talked about that. We're coming full circle. We talked about well, can how long can the shackle last if it's properly maintained? This obviously has not been properly maintained, but it still uh, seats properly, which is surprising to me. Um, it still threads. Yeah, I did. It, you know what this reminds me? It looks like a beat up uh, uh, railroad tie. You know, it has that patina, yeah. those little indentions. It looks like a railroad tie. It's had everything. It's had cutting torch on it. You can see weld splatter on it. You can see hammer nick marks. You can see where stuff's been drug over, and they used it as a rolling block. <laughs> um, you know, the pin. This thing's everything on it. So it's really my perfect example of, of, the, of how to inspect a shackle, all the little things. Here's it's very what you don't want. Right? But yeah, I mean... Wow. So I traded the guy two new shackles for that You can one. see how it's kind of... 
dorked up there and scratched up. Wow, this is... Well, you can see, yeah, it seats pretty well. It has a thread here still. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I would expect this, looking at it, that this would not line up. Nothing would line up. Yeah. But look at this thing. It can line up. And he was still using this. Not yeah. for serious loads. What is this rated at? Um, so that one's, that one's eight and a half T. So uh, 17,000 pounds. I can't tell who made it. Oh, is it a Crosby? Yeah, I think, uh, hold on. I see like the B. This is a Crosby. Yeah, so it's a Crosby, a Crosby from, you'll have to take some pictures and see if they can my, date this back. Carbon my favorite, dated. and I was saying, because my boss, he's got stuff that he's had and obviously he's attached to it. This is the one I found that was <laughs> the real deal in the field and I had to have it. And the guy was willing to trade up? He, or was he, he hesitant? Traded. He traded. He, well, no, he, 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 was, he, he told me the story behind it. I said, I gotta have it, you know, I gotta have it. what do he say? He said, all right, I'll trade you something. What are you gonna give me? So, I said, I'll give you two brand new ones. And he's all good? He's all good. Bada bing, bada boom. Yep. But my favorite shackle right now. Get attached to my stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, you don't even have a name for it, do you? No, no, I don't name my stuff. Huh? You don't name your stuff? Ah, no, it's not necessary. It's I not mean, like Betsy or something no, like that? No, or like no. <laughs> Laverne? No, nothing like that. <laughs> nothing like that at all. Why no names? Um, I don't know. You're you're attached to it, so you would think that there'd be some sort of no, no. friendship there. Yeah, it never talks to me. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it just hangs out. It just hangs out. No, but it, it is my favorite one. So. What other uh, stuff do you have in the bag? Or what else? Do you, oh, look at that sling right there. That uh, looks like a chainmail. Oh, okay. Well, let me, let me do that. He has a whole box of stuff. Well, maybe. Uh, you know, let's let's skip that one. Oh. Skip for a reason. I got a reason. Okay, this is a cool one here. Because that, that's a bad example. It's actually okay. Okay. So this is what we use in the class. This is for what they call an, an endless round sling, or and why do they call it endless for people who are listening well, or watching? This is not an endless. Right? This is a round sling. I apologize. Okay. Call. So an endless one will be if this was connected to here in a loop, and that would be an endless. That's it. So this one's used, but but this one was interesting because I really like these synthetic round slings. Uh -huh. is this, wait, is this a training one, or can you actually use this? Well, we could use it. It has, it has ready capacity, but it is for training because the cover's clear. Yeah, that's, so what, I, that's what I kind of think uh, is pretty cool, is you can actually see the fibers that make up uh, this sling here, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and, I, and you could, this is not ideal for in the sun or anything like that. Right, because the UV, this, you know, these slings have uh, an outer casing. So here's an example of one, the bigger one. It's got damage for inspection, but... Yeah this, this, yeah, this has your outer casing, right? This yeah. protects against da uh, dirt, chemicals, UV damage. Covers. To give some protection to the load-bearing fibers. Right, and right. And then obviously it's cut, so you can see kind of the fibers in here. Obviously there's some damage here, exposed fibers. Whenever you have exposed fibers, this thing's done. Yeah, yeah, we, we won't use anything exposed fibers. Um, uh, that's part of the inspection. Well, this, is a cool, this is a cool one here. But yeah, that's kind of... But, this, is, this clear one should be this. This is what you normally have. You'd have this outer, thicker, yeah, yeah. outer... It's like a denim material or something. But what I like about these is, is because to inspect these, these are really a feel item. I mean, you can see the cover and, and see what mm -hmm. the damage is, but it's a feel item. You know, you gotta feel it. You gotta run your hands over it. You gotta, now, if you have a kink or something, or what are you feeling for here? So what I'm feeling for is I'm really, let me, so let me find a spot that's good to show. Basically, he's massaging this uh, sling here. So you see right here, I don't know if you see these little knots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are normal. Those well, that are, knot is normal? That is normal. What about this braiding or fraying over on this side? It, it's not fraying, it's the end tail. Oh, okay. Just saying they're trimming all the way. So these not, and what it is, is while they're spooling this off and they're making it, it's going round and round and round, this fiber, which looks like, there's a rough example stuck in my <laughs> This. Oh, wow, you have everything in this Yeah, box. so that's what it is. And you can see it just doesn't feel like much, does it? No. But is it? Basically, it, it, it feels like, a very light yarn. This is what's holding this stuff up. And this is what it is. And that's why it's so important to inspect properly. But if you look at it in this, you can see it and you feel it. And those knots are just simply where they've been going around and they go to the next spool. Ah. And they make a special little knot and they continue on. So, so when you feel that, you think, oh, that's wrong. you know. But that's the way it's supposed to be. And as you come around and come around, you're going to feel a spot, which I showed you earlier, like that. See that? Oh, yeah. See? And, yeah. And if I was feeling that, I'd say, well, that's probably not right. But because I can't see through to see what it is. you can't see through it. But what he's done is when they end the two ends, they've pulled them around, they've tied them to this thing, and they've taped them off. And you uh -huh. can kind of see that. Yeah, very cool. So you know what you're feeling. But what you don't want to feel, if you were to damage one of these under load, what happens is this will spring back. Mm -hmm. 
and it'll become like a soft ball, a little ball, and it's soft in the end. And that wads up. And, and that's what you really don't want to feel. Ah, so there, there's some normal things you should feel here and then some things that you shouldn't feel. I'm glad you're explaining right. that. Right, and, and so by, by seeing through the cover, you get this experience of, of what you're seeing and what you're feeling. So when you go to do it in the field... Yeah, when you have this here... You know what you're, you know what you're feeling. And, you know you're, what you're, and you're feeling it, right? And you're like, oh, there's... You know, there's that knot, and you're, and you're thinking, oh, okay, Todd, explain this to this us. This is what it was. On the Crane Rental Podcast, and, and that's okay. What about, actually, let's look at that tag again. Okay, so this one. This is, this is a more uh, visual tag. You can see here it has our Crane Service logo and has all of um, the weighted capacities. We kind of like these tags. This is from Lift It. Uh, shout out to Lift It. Shout out to Crosby and everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, but you can see so that we can purchase tags that that have our logo on it, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. You can see expiration. No, that's per, uh, creation date, or uh, I think I'm sure that's a, the uh, manufactured December. Some sort of manufacture date. Um, you know, we have our basket vertical choke. Yeah, because it was we got this in twelve, so yeah, it was manufactured in twelve. So. Okay. Yeah, but it looks it looks really nice to be four years old, but this is obviously well, just for training. Yeah, that's for training. It's for training, but you know, it's the same thing: vertical basket choke. All this information. Yeah, so that's going to be standard on all your tags yeah. uh, for your rigging. And yeah, we talked about that. So let's talk about use. Okay. So let's talk about use. You know, when you read a tag and it says vertical basket choke, um, that means vertical. I mean, that's literally straight up and down. Right, right. That's a basket where these legs are straight up and down. But when we start doing this, when we widen this out, when we start having angles right. on here, we create greater tension than the load we're lifting. And therefore, we have to account for that. And that's where a lot of times people are making mistakes, is they're reading the tag, I'm picking this, I'm doing this, but they've got these angles on their slings, like up here. Yeah, and this comes back to our load angle multiplier. Sure. So we have to do basically is say, how much weight am I picking up on this one sling? Right. Um, it's, in this case, it's 5,000 pounds. Right, on this, on this. And then, this is old, too. I didn't intend on doing this, but it's okay. So then we ask <laughs> Well, we're talking about use. Yeah, so what we're asking ourselves is, we've got to have a multiplier times this 500 pounds based on this angle of this sling. Right, basically... To get the true tensioning in that sling. Right, using so basically Pythagorean's theorem. I'm, I hope I said that right. Pythagorean's? Well, Pythagorean? it's, Pythagorean? it's hard to say his name, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but just because you have, let's say, a piece of, an object that weighs 10,000 pounds, you have two uh, legs, so each leg, in theory, is supporting 5,000 pounds. But when you actually have add the angles and uh, the slings, we the actual tension. The tension in the sling is more than 5,000 pounds. That, yeah, and that's right. And so therefore, as the tensioning goes up, for this example, we'll use, we'll use our multiplier is 1.5. 1.15. So that's our LAM or load angle multiplier. And that's basically that's basically uh, our Pythagorean theorem. We we know well that a, we know A leg, we know B leg, and the C leg. Pythagorean is going to get us uh, it's going to get us the lengths of any one side in the triangle. Right. And so but well, this number here is basically Oh that's neither. divided, yeah. Yeah that's 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 a number that we use we use Pythagorean to get the, the length, the height of the hook. Mm-hmm. To, so that would then allow us to get to this number. But putting this aside, this that's, number... That's another episode. Yeah, I mean, because we can go, go and go and go on this. Right. That 1.5 is a load angle multiplier. And all that's saying is, based on the angle the sling is on, which we can use Pythagorean to get, but based right. on the angle the sling is on, we, need a, we have a greater tension, so we, need a, we have a multiplier times how much of the load we're actually picking with that sling. Yeah, and the multiplier, so you're going to times that 1.15 times the 5,000 due to the angle and the length of the sling. Yes, and so we come up with 5,750 pounds of tensioning. So we're this, only this, picking 5,000. So this sling. sling has to be worth good for that or more. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're looking at a 6K or more. Now, yeah. we, we give rule of thumb things that allow people, you can go out and just rig, and you don't have to be doing this every time. And we have cards that you Yeah, can... I like that card that you gave us. It's a va- basically a visual card. You put it up to the crane, you can see, oh, okay, the slings are at this angle. You know, it's approximation, it's not sure. exact, but you're pretty pretty close. You're close enough, and, 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 and we're always overestimating. You never mm-hmm. underestimate. So right. you're, you're, you're good that way. So there's ways to do it. But it's important that, the, that you learn the math and the theory behind it, how it works, because then you have a strong understanding when you go in the field of what you got to do and why you're doing it. Yeah, because you could have a, a um, angle of more than 45 degrees 
or 60 degrees is an optimal angle, but you can have something more more than 60, right? Maybe 75, 80 in extreme situations. Extreme situations. And yeah. now you're you're instead of having a um, you know your your load angle multipliers gonna be higher, so right. you're gonna need a higher capacity sling because uh, it's gonna be taking more weight. So you can't just roll up to a job site and say I have a five thousand pound sling. Let's lift the world. No, I know. Because you need to know what's actually happening mathematically and scientifically in the use. Yeah, so, so that you're picking the right size length. Right. The other item you got to remember is when this angle comes down, 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 down like that. Right. So which grad down would mean greater angle. Right, right. Increase of angle. Not increase the angle. We're compressing that load too. Oh, you're right. We're, so we have compressed effect. So you may have a load that you can't compress, and then you go putting sling angles on this thing. And yeah, you, and what, you just fold what I'm instantly thinking about is roofing material that's metal. Yep, something like that. Would be, or, you know, something that's a, a long, flat piece that, you know, doesn't have much structure uh, or um, to it. You know, you could, you're going to bend the heck out of that. Yeah, it uh, uh, depends on the load. So these are all... Or even an AC. Your attachment points maybe can't handle those. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Yeah, there's a bunch of situations. So that's pretty good use. Uh, yeah, we're going to definitely have to talk about loading and multiplier in another episode. Yeah, we could do the whole thing. Checking on our time here. Uh, we're rolling pretty good. We have a few more minutes here, Todd. Okay. Our hours go by fast. Todd was like, we're going to do an hour today? Yeah. So, yeah but you remember, it, it goes by fast when we're talking like about that. Anything else in here that we could... He's rooting around his magic box here. Yeah. You got something? So, I, I, oh, okay. I, well, it's, a lot of times we do a really good job with our rigging. But we're kind of subject to the attachment points that we're given. Whether that's a welded lifting lug okay. or, or manufactured lugs. Now you have an eye bolt here. Let's so non-shouldered eye bolts. This thing, if it was a type that would, wasn't with a nut on here where you would thread it into the... Oh, the actual piece? The piece or whatever. You're subject to that thread and the thread that you engage in. Mm. Okay. So if you, if you only have two threads of engagement on that... Or they're a little stripped. Right. Or we didn't fully thread them. You're gonna have problems. You problems. could slip out of that thread, right? You could lose the load. Um, this thing will only take a load in a direct pull fashion. Well, what do we do when we side the load this thing? It doesn't have a shoulder. It has no shoulder. So you can't side load. The shoulders you can side load a little bit, right? Well, there is, and it's a reduction chart. Sure. So we reduce, reduce its capacity the more we side load that. Um, then we have other uh, devices, which probably right. for another episode, <laughs> yeah. you know, that totally mitigate that issue. Hmm, okay. but, and, but those have to do with you have to torque them in, in properly. There's other things we can do. But this is your standard eye bolt. Here. But this is just you might find this in a motor, and it may be and it may be one of the problems. This it may just be Home Depot thing. I don't mean to, but but it's yeah, not it's, rigging quality. It's not rigging. Uh, right. It wasn't meant for this. No, it wasn't meant. Whether it's quality or not, but it wasn't meant for this. It wasn't meant to be it's suspended. Not, yeah, it's not the application. Yeah, it's made to hold your house plan. <laughs> yeah, no, not a motor or something like that. <laughs> so, so eye bolts are problematic, and, and they're misused all the time. And if you see one that's bent, oh, toast. With it, you know, you gotta go. You gotta yeah, go. what do you what do you look for in an eye bolt uh, that would be dead giveaway that I can't use it? Obviously, threaded, right? Yeah, threading just, issues. So threading. One of the problems with threading, and of course, this has a nut on it. But if if we were threading or something, the the threads here mm -hmm. and the threads that it's going. To. Oh yeah. So if you're if you're torquing it to get it through, yeah, and probably you're gonna have. <laughs> Probably gonna have issues. A lot of times there's dirt in that little hole, right? And what do we do? We just go as far as we can. Or if it's a shoulder eye bolt, a little eye bolt with a shoulder. Yeah. We'll use washers. Someone, we won't, but it can. People do use washers to make up the space to seat it properly. Oh, wow. Well, you just lost that thread engagement and its capacity. Is right, so it's just kind of, you, 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 um, yeah, you go past the manufacturer there. Yeah. Looking for cracks, deformation, any bedding, anything like that. Anything that makes it, it say, man, I wonder, you know. No, I say, when you pick a load, if you're saying to yourself, oh, it should make it, it'll probably be okay. That's, that's, a good time, that's the time to set it down and say, make sure you're confident in it. Yeah, confident. that's what you don't want to hear when you're on a job. Yeah. And you're holding a, a million dollar piece, right? Yeah. Well, it's probably going to work. Yeah. Well, I guess, Todd, we have only just a few more minutes here. Do you have anything else you want to go over or talk um, about? This is basically rigging 101 is what we're going to have to call this. Well, I mean, This is it, very entry level, very, of course. Very, um, rigging you know, to... I've used these, I, I just, just out of, just because it's interesting and I like this because it's, there's all kinds of inspection aids yeah. to this. This has got fiber optics that runs through this synthetic. Oh, wow, that's cool. So they can just, you know, if, if you put a signal through here, basically light. Light. And nothing comes out here, you got a problem? Basically, if you cut this in your hand, I can see light coming through it right now. Really? Yeah, go no, you cut it. Oh, light. wow, I can. Yeah. So, you know, when you can't see light, there's something wrong. <laughs> um, that's crazy. It's this is this a, whole thing. This is a twin path. 
So it's got two, I don't know if you can see two. Yeah. A twin path um, synthetic ground sling. Um, there's other ones that at least, I like these fast checks, it's this little yellow. Mm -hmm. And what happens is if someone overloads this, mm -hmm. it only, it'll pull this little, little tab, this little tail, mm -hmm. it'll disappear in there. Oh, it'll okay. Pull it right in. So that's and, pretty cool. So then you know that you've got a problem, it's going to overload it, even though you can't see it. Right. right. Yeah. So there's all kinds of different um, there's inspection aids that you can purchase with stuff, but nothing really beats the old fashioned taking a look and touching it. And feeling it and do your rub down. That was brought to us by Sling Max. Yeah, Great. this is Sling Max, which we really like Sling Max. Great slings. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this if I cup it, but maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But, it's, but, it's, but it's pretty cool. It's, it's an aid, and you know, it's probably has an application for a certain customer or certain. Uh, yeah. Interesting. And sometimes a project will require specialty rigging while we'll to go out and purchase it. You know, it's not in our standard arsenal of rigging, or they need from factory to one use rigging. That, that happens. You know, one use rigging, and then one time, uh, one time for that client, and then we can use it for other things, or or it gets cut in softeners. Or it gets discarded. Yeah, discarded. So yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Uh, rigging 101. Our time has flown by as usual. Yeah. Um, so my name is Chris Martin, marketing coordinator. This is Todd Brown. Safety. Training safety and training coordinator. Okay. okay. Yeah. Safety and training coordinator, right? Yeah. We got it this time. Um, look for us uh, next week. You're going to be out of town next week. That is true. Yeah. So next week we're actually going to be, uh, our episodes, I think we're going to talk with Rob Pulliam about how he became a crane operator. Yeah. We're going to the Sea of the Marsh Buggies, and uh, we'll get him on, on that trip. So next week we'll be talking with Rob Pulliam. Man, he's been in the game for a long time. We should do sling angle multipliers and yeah. diagram to find the height of the hook and the different. Yeah, that's going to be a, definitely a subsequent episode. Rigging 202, maybe? Well, yeah, the, the next level, this is our base level. Right. And so I'd like to keep it there, but yes, we can go as far as we need to go. And we have a uh, rigging warehouse here uh, where we can pick up loads. You can actually see it on our scales. And we'll do an episode like that. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. I think, yeah, scales would be nice to scale. See, you can see vertical, then you can put on angles and scale the tension in, yeah. in, in, in angles. So there's some, there's some fun stuff coming up, guys. Uh, thanks for watching us or listening to us. On, if you're on uh, iTunes or SoundCloud, thanks for watching us on YouTube and uh, checking us out. So anything you want to say before we go, Todd? No, just um, inspect your rigging. Inspect your rigging. It's, it's just as important as inspecting that crane. And uh, you know, the, it, having a qualified rigger is, uh, is an important aspect of what we do. Yeah. So get yourself qualified. Get yourself qualified, inspect your equipment, rigging cranes, uh, make sure you're seated right on the, on the ground, learn about that on matting. So these are, we're going to give you some tips here of, uh, uh, throughout this whole crane podcast of what's right, what's industry standard, what not to do, and that'll be fun. Yeah, it's a good deal. All right, guys, we'll see you next week uh, with Rob Pulliam talking about how we became a crane operator, and we'll see Todd in a few weeks, sounds like, uh, where we'll talk about load angle multipliers. Okay. All right. Bye, guys.